It's the same battle plan you can be seated as last week. If you don't have yours with you or you need one, uh, raise your hand up. Zach will get you that. If you have yours from last week, then you're fine. Um, but uh, we're on the same battle plan about addictions. And uh, so uh, I think we, uh, we are excited about uh, this lesson and, and things that we can learn and grow in and addictions and uh, in general. And so um, as we uh, look into this, um, the key verse is uh, verse uh, 1 Corinthians, if you look inside there, in chapter 6 and verse 12. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says this, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful unto me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So, I just, it's not the message at all, but people misquote that verse, you know. We're under liberty. You can, you know, do what you want to do. And, uh, oh, really? So I can murder you, and God's good with that, right? And uh, it's, it's silly that uh, he's talking about the, the ceremonial law, and you couldn't eat certain meats, and all the different uh, rituals that Christ fulfilled. And he said, uh, you know, I can do these things, but, you know, I'm not going to, um, you know, if it's going to offend my brother, and, you know, if it's going to cause problems. I'm, I, I can do that, but I'm not going to be brought in the power of anything, because we're supposed to be sober, and sober, you know, means under control. It means uh, you're 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 able to uh, be in charge of things. And so, um, it is anything that brings you under His power outside of God, okay, or something to do with Him, His Word, is you know, uh, you know, His service is uh, you know anything that that you can't is controlling you. You're supposed to be uh, uh, under the control of God and living sacrifice to God. And so Paul says, you know, it's fine, meats, whatever, but I'll not be brought under the power of any. If if meats are controlling me, I'll just go to vegetables. If vegetables control me, I'll go to meats. I yeah, I'm just not gonna be brought under the power of anything, and that's the biblical concept. And let's go back there, and we'll get. Let's say, go ahead and pray. Lord, thank you for the chance to teach as we have looked into your word about this addictions thing. And and uh, Lord, probably in this room, most people don't have uh, any of the traditional of addictions. There might be, but uh, in most cases, they're not. Uh, living with uh, addiction to alcohol or, you know, the, the, the traditional things that we have, a gambling addiction or something that, that, are, that are obvious, that uh, uh, have been dealt with for centuries and stuff. Lord, I pray that, Lord, if we do have anything that's controlling us, I pray that you would help us and speak to us and give us wisdom. And uh, you met with us in a special way last week about this, Lord, and, uh, and I pray you do so again, whether it's uh, encouraging, convicting, wisdom, uh, we need all these things, Lord, so please help us, we pray, in all the services today. If we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I'm just going to give you the, the, some points we had last week. Um, number one we talked about was really uh, um, self-control. Um, he that no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. And you've got to have self-control. And, uh, and people make fun of not having self-control. I just can't stop spending. I just that, That's a sin. It's a sin. I just can't stop looking at this. I just can't, you know, I can't quit gossiping. I can't quit talking. You know, I can't get angry. Okay, then change it. You need to fix it because you need self-control. And, uh, and, and we read the verses on that. And then we talked about uh, um, in- intensity and purpose. And, uh, and, and that, that matters and helps you. Um, and, and, and you're doing things on purpose and you're living with purpose. And so we talked about that. And then we, uh, we talk about prayer and the importance of prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And, uh, and so we went into those things, uh, into the addictions things, and just some subjects through these verses. And we read some other ones that weren't uh, on the page here. And, uh, and so I just want to uh, continue this lesson and talk about addictions a little bit and the battle plan. Of course, the battle plan's in the front there. Assurance of salvation, baptism after salvation. Uh, church uh, and fellowship, dedication to prayer, an extra Bible, and uh, and so here's the ver- these are the verses that you can have, and I'm just giving you just some wisdom about addictions as we uh, deal with. I-, I think every week of my life I'm dealing with addictions with somebody somewhere, and uh, a lot of times they don't know we're dealing with addictions. Um, they just uh, they don't know that their 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 anger, their whatever is 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 something, and uh, or their you know, um, the technology addiction, which we'll talk about today. So there's always just addictions to deal with. And, um, and, and so, um, or, you know, I just, you know, they, they just, they, they, 
it can be sports, it can be anything, you know, it's all kinds of things. And so, um, but, uh, and so just some things about this, just because we want to get wisdom and we deal with it all the time and it's, it's a part of our society. We're in a very addicted society. Um, uh, the next thing I want to get into is you can have victory. Uh, you can, you can have victory. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then across the page there, Romans chapter six, verse twelve through fourteen. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield to your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, as those that are life from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Philippians 4.13, a few verses down there, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. One of the devil's chief tools in addictions is to get you to feel like, why try? I can't, I can't overcome this anyway. And it, once you have that mentality, um, you quit trying. It's not, it doesn't matter. I'm never going to change. I've tried and I fell back. Well, a lot of times people tried in the flesh. They tried in their own strength. They tried without God. They tried when they weren't a Christian. And, uh, and, and, and so, and then, a lot, and this the thing is, is they tried without wisdom. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things is, you know, you might have all the desire in the world, but you might not have the discipline. You might have all the desire in the world, but you don't have, you don't have wisdom. And, and just let me take an extreme of that. Okay. Let me, let me uh, take you to the extreme of that and just show you how wisdom makes a massive difference, okay? And makes it much easier. A lot of people get defeat because they don't have wisdom. Um, they try to fight things foolishly. So, how many times this happened? Uh, we've had a, a couple who are living together in, in fornication, and they weren't married. And, uh, and, and one of them got saved, and, or they, both of them got saved, but oftentimes that one gets saved. And uh, we'd talk about it, and they'd start growing in grace, and they would say, you know, I am, I'm going to, you know, my girlfriend going to quit doing stuff. You know, we're going to quit doing that stuff, and we're, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be, you know, I'm just going to decide I'm not going to do it. And I'll say, well, you guys going to still live together? And he says, well, yeah. I said, how many bedrooms do you have? Well, just one. I said, good luck. <laughs> you know, it's not going to happen, okay, because you're, that, there's no wisdom there. You're laying down in the same bed, okay, um, and 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 so that so the desire might be there. No, I really, I really, I'm not going to do this anymore. But there's no wisdom there, okay. And the wisdom makes it a lot harder, okay. It makes it far more difficult when you when you say I'm going to quit drinking, but I'm just going to keep the beer in the fridge, yeah, okay. But you have an alcohol problem, and the beer is in the fridge, and just that lack of wisdom. It just makes it harder. And so there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a whole spectrum of biblical stuff that helps you overcome stuff. You know, right? If you're right, I offend you, you know, pluck it out. And so, you know, <clears throat> um, so there's a whole bunch of, of, of things you can put in your life to make things easier. Accountability, and that's just wisdom. I don't have a Bible verse that says thou shall, you know, put accountability on your phone or, or call someone and you're tempted. But I can give you the principles of that. Okay, and 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 so um, and so wisdom. So so they tried. They didn't have wisdom. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They weren't saved. Uh, they didn't know the Word of God. Um, they didn't have the kind of fellowship that they get and and the Holy Spirit speaking. Maybe they, they would get it open door. And so they've given up, or they're discouraged. Well, just men fall seven times and it rises up again. But when you feel like you can't have victory, when you don't believe Philippians four thirteen, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. He's the one who gives you the strength. Then you then you quit trying. And then you just throw in the towel. But I want to tell you that the Bible says you can have victory. Uh, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so that's part of the victory is believing that you can. And then it is a spiritual battle. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. Um, uh, it says this, uh, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God are the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing uh, into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons. To overcome whatever it is, anger, bitterness, pride, you know, lust, you know, whatever it is, just whatever you're trying to overcome, 
it is not just a physical thing. You understand, there's, once you see it, you can't unsee it. You wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You're not fighting against people. So then all of a sudden you determine you're going to quit getting angry. And the people who make you the most angry are going to get put right next to you. And be twice as irritating. You're going to say, why is it so hard? I tried to do this. Because all of a sudden you're wrestling now. You were just pinned earlier. Well, now you got back up and are fighting. Well, the enemy's fighting now. Okay? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And so you've got to realize this is a war that's not won because uh, you, you had a great plan or because you have all kinds of willpower. I mean, God uses all those things. But you're fighting against demons and devils. You need the name of Jesus. You need scripture. You need prayer. Okay? You need mind control in this passage we just read. Okay, and, and that's a big part of, of the spiritual battle is mind control, which most people don't have uh, the mental discipline of their mind to be able to change what they're thinking about, to be able to start thinking about good things and they're thinking about bad. It, all that, that stuff that's biblical um, that we have, but it says we're casting down imaginations. Uh, 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 and man, I just, I, that, that casting down imaginations thing, I got so many things to teach on today, but just uh, casting down imaginations. The devil gives you evil surmisings and, and, and writes stories that haven't happened yet and give you ideas about things and starts giving you discouraging things that haven't... Even, he just... Even, these imaginations. And they can be all kinds of things. You've got to cast those things down. And sometimes they're lustful thoughts and sometimes they're depressing thoughts. Sometimes they're hopeless thoughts. Sometimes it's, it's, it's revenge thoughts. But you've got to cast down the imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God... It is a spiritual battle, and, uh, and, and, but our weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so you cannot do the things that you would. You know, it's strange. Yeah, how many people have told me, Pastor, I don't mind witnessing all, but my family, it is so hard to talk to my family. Why is that? You already know them. You love them. You want them to get the gospel. But the devil, because you're, you're the Andrew to bring Peter to Christ. And so the devil makes it twice as hard. And right before you get to witness them, a fight starts. It just, there, there's a war. And, you, and, and you'll lose that war. And you'll always say, man, I'm always, I'm always defeated unless you're really praying. Praying always, because it's a war. Uh, James 4, 7 and 8, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So that in his addictions things, you've got to fight it in the spirit, because it's a spiritual war. And, uh, and, and we see that, that war that we have there, it is a spiritual battle. And then I want to, I want to show you just at the end here, uh, several of these verses is suffering can bring the victory from your addictions. Suffering can bring the, the transformation from your addictions. James 5.16, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another. That you, uh, I'm sorry, uh, next verse, we already, that was a prayer one. Uh, the, uh, 1 Peter 4, 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. We talk about that with that self-discipline, and when your flesh starts getting denied, you start the flesh starts getting weaker. Well, when you suffer in the flesh, the flesh is 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 when the flesh gets everything it wants, and when the flesh is happy and, and gets and is satisfied, the flesh it gets so strong it does not want to be denied. But when the flesh is being denied, or when the flesh is suffering, it's easy to stop sinning because your flesh can't drag you around anymore. Because the flesh has been deni denied. Now, we can deny our flesh, which is something we're going to have to do because we have a satisfied flesh because of our wonderful lice we have in, in America and our wonderful uh, uh, things we have. Our, our, flesh, um, our flesh, we have to deny ourselves. But sometimes just life will make you suffer and you'll find those valleys, those, those hard times are where you grow the most. Look, that's, you, you don't have a lot of uh, uh, vegetation on top of Mount Rainier. 
things grow in valleys and you grow in valleys and and dark times and hard times he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin and uh, and so suffering sometimes first peter uh, chapter 5 verse 10 but the god of grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory um, by christ jesus after ye have suffered a while make you perfect establish strengthen settle you sometimes and this happened to me this is this was the uh kind of the completion of my removing the immaturity and the, the, the things that I just couldn't overcome, kind of at the very, uh, you know, I just had a bunch of blaring things in my Christian life as a baby Christian. But then there, I, I had a lot of victory at a lot of things, and there was a couple of things I just couldn't overcome. And I prayed and said, Lord, I, I'm just not strong enough. I just don't love you enough. I can't conquer these things. And, and I couldn't get over those things. And, and, and God answered my prayer, but I didn't associate it, is all of a sudden I started suffering. Like I'd never suffered. And I mean, I started really going through it in a different way. And I, I didn't even realize it. Um, but I just remember, I just remember all of a sudden I just started those last few things just started going away. And I just remember just being done. And you know what? I, I, and, and not that I never had sin and not that I never struggled or anything else. But I just remember just things that I couldn't overcome were, were overcome. And, and, you know, there are things that are in your life. Okay. That, that okay, if you can separate that, there are th- things you, you slip up in, and then there's things that are in your life, okay? Those last things that were in my life, okay? Uh, those, things, those things were overcome by my suffering. And, and, and that was, I, I, I didn't realize that, but I, I, I did it literally when I, the, uh, because, you know, the last two things were music and, and chewing tobacco, and uh, and the music just kind of went away, and I just the music was was it just started. I put, God put a new song in my heart when I started suffering, and then chewing tobacco. I just I just remember I bought the last can. I just had a habit. I went and bought it. and I realized, man, I've hardly even used this lately. That's weird. Why haven't I done this? Usually, I've got to dip my lip all the time, and and uh, and I don't, and I haven't. And I thought I just looked. And I said, I don't need this anymore. And I threw it on the ground, stomped on it, and walked off, and 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 haven't. I haven't done it since, and I was, I was, I'm sure it, it just turned 17, maybe, and uh, and so, um, but but suffering, suffering will help you, and sometimes your prayer gets answered for complete victory when you start suffering. All of a sudden, you lose some friends. All of a sudden, you're persecuted. All of a sudden, you get a physical ailment or whatever, because a lot of times it brings after you suffered a while, you get, you get established, and then sometimes God can take the suffering away um, because it was there for a purpose. And uh, you had that. I want you to, <clears throat> um, uh, I want you to understand that these are some methods that we talked about that, that'll get us through addictions. Um, there, there are other things, and there are methods, and there's human intervention, and there's all kinds of things that we've talked about last week. We didn't. This week will not be a complete lesson without last week, but but you can overcome any addiction. I want to talk just for a minute. Uh, on technology addiction, and then I want to go back and just talk about one more error, one more mindset that'll help you overcome addictions. And uh, so uh, I just ran through those those things right there pretty quick, so I can get to this. Um, are, so, um, okay, so technology addiction is a little bit different. Okay, um, when a person is alcoholic, everybody knew he's an alcoholic. The alcoholic had a problem with admitting it. Okay. Um, that was the biggest thing. I can stop whenever I want to. I do, okay, stop. Then I just don't want to. Okay, the conversations we had with alcoholics through once they started to understand alcoholic alcoholism in the '60s, '70s, '80s, '90s, AA became big. And the first step to stopping your addiction is admitting you have an addiction. Okay, and 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 so it wasn't hard because you know there were so many symptoms around. First thing he did when he got home, started drinking. Uh, sometimes you go without food, but he always drink. You know, his family's falling apart. It didn't matter. He had to drink. His wife would be crying, begging him. The kids would say, please, Dad, don't go drink it again. The guy who was a really nice guy is now punching his wife. All the, there was all these things, and we kind of knew the alcoholic, and, and his body changed, okay? His face changed. I mean, if, if you're, you know, I was dealing with alcoholics, and I was, you know, this big. Uh, you know, uh, you can look at an alcoholic's face many times, see they're alcoholic by their face. Uh, many times and and so just like just like you know a heroin act has a certain color to his skin okay you just get familiar with stuff and and so these these addictions are are you know a meth addict you know, like if you have any experience at all you know what a meth addict looks like 
Okay, just there, there's a bunch of things with their sores and their teeth, and there's a bunch of uh, things. Sometimes their hair falls, just a bunch of things. Okay, so addictions traditionally are pretty easy to do. Um, you could see them, and, and uh, pretty easy to see, pretty easy to recognize. And even the addicts knew they're addicts many times. The guy who knows he can't quit smoking. Okay, um, he knows uh, you, he can't quit smoking. And he knows it's an addiction. He says, man, it's just so hard to quit. Okay, these are all things that are pretty easy to know, and, 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 and we would say. But then there are <clears throat> socially acceptable addictions or ones we don't recognize because they're too new. And that's technology. Because probably 60% of Americans are, are addicted to technology. Do you know, did you know if you used to watch TV in the 60s, you know the people on TV, I'm talking... The news people doing the news were smoking. The airplane was full of smoke. The restaurant was full of smoke. Everybody smoked. Okay? And it was acceptable. And nobody thought they were addicts. The advertisements used to have doctors standing there and say, doctors smoke, you know, uh, doctors recommend smoking. And the doctors are smoking. Look it up online. Okay? It was acceptable. And so nobody thought smoking was an addiction because everybody was doing it until they started trying to stop. And then all of a sudden, you know, the Surgeon General at some point said, hey, this is causing lung cancer. You should stop doing this. And all of a sudden, they were like, yeah, man, this is really bad for me. And then they knew somebody got lung cancer and somebody else died. And they're like, I got to stop. They're like, I can't stop. And they, they're like, this is incredibly hard. So we're in that early phase with technology right now. Okay, so five years ago, people are kind of like, I think this might be an addiction. The people who study addiction, the people in, you know, all the people in the field, psychology, psychiatry, all of them, they started saying, there's some real danger signs here. This looks like regular addiction. Okay. Now we're well beyond that. And now they're, they're they have, and now they have the pharmaceuticals always, you know, pharmaceuticals starting to come out with it now uh, the, and, and trying to figure out, okay, uh, but Forget the pharmaceuticals. They're, they're saying, okay, now we're labeling things. Now we know what this is. Now we know the signs. Now they're studying the brains of technology addicts. Okay? Okay, technology addict can be pornography. It can be video games. It can be staring at your smartphone. It can be email. It can be social media. Just technology addiction. Okay? Uh, that technology addiction, It now that they're studying the brain, the brain of a technology addict has the same problems as a drug addict. The physical brain. I'm talking the color, there, there starts getting spots in your brain, the colors start changing, certain things quit developing. It's the same, it's same, it's the same thing. Um, the dopamine damage, it's all the same, okay? And so um, not as fast, not as severe, okay? But, but over time, because people, because of technology, now the brain is starting to look like the brain of a serious addict, a meth addict or a crack addict, it's starting to look the same. Why? Because people aren't smoking crack for as many hours a day as people are doing technology. Okay? And so it's not as dangerous. It's not as intense. Tech, smoking crack at all is bad. Technology a little bit is not bad. But I will not be brought under the power of any. So I'm going to read you just a bunch of stuff here. I'm read as there, there, there's no exact guidelines yet. Okay, there will be. It's coming. Just they're working on this stuff. Um, <clears throat> there are guidelines. I'm going to read you some of the guidelines about technology and recognizing technology addiction. They're just not uniform yet because these people at this university are studying it and saying it, and these people here, but they haven't put it all together and just kind of come up with a plan and a system yet. Um, uh, signs of technology addiction often uh, have uh, mood changes. A person with technology addiction like a lot of addictions, they will say, I don't, I'm just so grumpy sometimes. I'm so up and down all the time now. It didn't used to be like this. It's, addictions do that usually, but technology addiction seems to really go in that direction. Um, and, and usually it's on the depression side. Okay. Um, focus on the internet and digital media. That's a focus of life. It's kind of what you think about all the time. It's kind of what you're going back to. Um, uh, you're unable to control how much time you spend. You need more time, uh, uh, need more time or a new game to be happy. Uh, show withdrawal symptoms when they're not using the internet or technology. Continue using the internet or technology even when it affects their relationships. The neg uh, relationships neglect their social work, their, their, neglect their social life, work, uh, or school life. In other words, it starts affecting them. They know they should be studying, but. That's, that's, that's signs of technology addiction. And you say, well, I do that. 
you might be addicted. Okay, that's what I'm saying. This addiction a lot of people have, but it's like, I know, I probably spent. But, but it might be more serious than you think. Okay, it might be more serious than you think. I mean, if, if every stoplight, okay, then, then maybe there's a problem there. Uh, describing their excessive activity as normal or even healthy. Compulsively checking text messages or notifications. Like, like if you got something three minutes ago, you have to read it. Um, I, I, I'm going to put it in here. In church. I'll just put that there. And uh, uh, losing interest in things that don't involve the internet or technology. Getting less sleep due to the activity. Displaying irritil, ir, uh, irrit, ir, irrit, irritability. I couldn't, that word didn't come out right. Irritability. Uh, depression and lethargy. Cannot pronounce words properly, um, but uh, going out of their way to pre- uh, uh, going out of their way to prevent uh, interrupted play, such as wearing an adult diaper. Okay, you say, Pastor, you, I didn't write that. Okay, that that just I've seen that now. Okay, um, where because these video games, there's no pause. Okay, but they're saying that. Okay, this is this is what they're saying. Um, uh, so some things they say to ask yourself, do you think about your previous activity um, or obsess over um, uh, the next session? So what's, in your, what's in your mind all the time? That's what people did with beer, okay? Do you need to use more of the internet or play games for longer to achieve satisfaction? Classic sign of addiction. Um, have you tried uh, to control, cut back, or stop use without success? Have you stayed online longer than intended? Um, a, a, a physical slash emotional attachment. You need to touch it, have it nearby, even when it is not in use, i.e., you at, uh, while at work or sleeping. Um, uh, are you okay with it out of reach? Okay. Um, also, one of the following situations must uh, be present to have a diagnosis. I'm just telling you what they, just the this, this stuff they're putting together. These are from different universities, different psychological groups. I'm just, give, just giving you some of the stuff they're saying as they're trying to figure this out. Um, you, lo- you lost a job, relationship, or significant opportunity due to use. You lied to a family member, therapist, or others about use. You use the internet or games as an escape from, uh, from problems or moods. So, so just so you know, those are all just regular old addiction things, okay? That's just what addicts do, okay? It's very classic stuff. And so, um, and so um, you got to be careful. I'm going to read to you just a, a couple things here. Um, these are just uh, some, these are, these are uh, again, none of these are, these are not, these are not Christian articles, okay? One's Time Magazine, um, the other one, I forgot, it's, it's a major... Uh, 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 thing. Uh, I can't remember which, which one it is. It's a major uh, newspaper, and uh, these are articles from them. Um, this, is, uh, this is by a guy named Jonathan Haidt, and uh, some articles he wrote about. He's a social psychologist. Um, at 59, Mr. Haidt is a, young, uh, is a young boomer, and he isn't talking about millennials, some of whom are in their 40s by now. Rather, he, he has in mind the younger, is the, the younger cohort, Generation Z, which usually is defined as those be born between 97 and 2012. When you look at the Ameri- uh, Americans born after 1985, Mr. Height says, you will, find that, uh, you will find that they have extraordinarily high rates of anxiety, depression, self-harm, suicide, and fragility. Um, there has never been a generation as depressed anxious, and fragile. I'm skipping just sections of the article. Social media is Mr. Height's present obsession. He is working on two books to address a harmful impact uh, on, on uh, American society. And uh, the former uh, title, I think it's called Kids in Space, and, and there's some other, another book he has also, um, uh, is a metaphor. Um, let's see. Social media, uh, let's see. The former title is a metaphor, Mr. Height uh, imagines literally launching our children to outer space and letting their bodies grow there. They would come out deformed or broken. Uh, their limbs would not be right. Um, you can't uh, physically grow up in outer space. Um, human bodies can't do that. Yet we basically do that 
uh, to them socially. We launched them into outer space around the year 2012, he says. And then we expect that they will grow up normally without having normal human experience. This is really important right here. Catch this because I saw this, but I, 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 I didn't put it all together like he did, I, but I just saw this. I saw when something flipped with young people in there, and, and, and I saw when the emotional damage do, it was done with young people. And, and he goes into exactly a year here, okay, um, in 2012. Mr. Height's research confirmed that uh, by that of others, shows the depression rate started to uh, rise all of a sudden around 2013, especially for teen girls. But it's only Gen Z, not the other gener generations. If you stopped collecting data in 2011, he says, you'd see little change from previous years. By 2015, it's an epidemic. And there's a lot of the sources of the, of the studies. Uh, what happened in 2013 when the oldest Gen Z uh, babies were in their middle teens? Uh, that was the year Facebook acquired Instagram and young people um, flocked to the latter site. It was also the beginning of the selfie area. Apple's iPhone 4 released in 2010 had the first front-facing camera, which was much improved. The iPhone 5 introduced two years later. Social media and selfies hit a generation that had led uh, an overprotected childhood, uh, in which the an age in which children were allowed to go outside on their own by parents had risen from the norm of previous generations of seven to eight to between t ten and twelve. So, uh, well, let me show you why that matters. Uh, that meant the first social media generation was one of weakened kids who hadn't practiced the skills of adulthood in low stakes environment with other children. Uh, they were deprived of the normal toughening, the normal strengthening, the, nor uh, the normal anti-fragility. Before 2010, teenagers had flip phones. They'd text each other and say, let's meet down at the mall. They would do things together. Now the childhood is only largely just through their phone. They no longer even hang out together. Teenagers even drive less than earlier generations did. So kids used to, at eight years old, go out and they would go and they would, um, uh, they would have normal relationships in person. They would fight over the same ball. Uh, they would go and say, let's see if we can jump over this creek. And they'd fall back in the creek and get laughed at. And all the stuff that just happened in life, that all of a sudden everything went online. And you could just unfriend somebody. And, and when, when you fell and everybody laughed at you, when you fell on your face, everybody laughed at you. And, and you had to get up and, and, and keep playing or go home and cry or whatever and live with it and face the next day at school. All that stuff kind of ended. And so everything went online, and they did not get tough enough in just regular kids' ways of, we played King of the Mountain, and they, they shoved me off, and they're on the mountain now. Or, you know, um, you know nobody told me that, you know, um, you know, my shirt's on backwards and inside out. Uh, and they laughed at me all day, and then they told me. And, and just stuff. And I'm not saying that's even nice. I'm just saying just life's tough. And you learn normal stuff as a kid. You know, when, when stuff happens. And kids didn't have that. They, they, you couldn't let your kids go out and run around all day and be gone from after school until dark. That's not the society we lived in anymore. We lived in anymore. But uh, they didn't have brothers and sisters to compete with and steal their stuff and all that stuff. And, and so there, a lot of them are one or two kids in the family, in their own room. So a lot of things that normally happen to, just in life, so they didn't, they didn't get toughened up in that way. Um, uh, that meant uh, a, a life of uh, 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 the, the first social media generation was one of weakened kids. Um, they were deprived of normal toughening, um, and uh, they, they, they didn't get to do that stuff. Mr. Hyde especially worries about girls. By 2020, more than 25% of female teen teenagers had major depression. 25%. The compare, by the, that's supposed to be the happiest, funnest time of your life when you're a teenager. When I was unsaved as a teenager, I was having fun. I was being an idiot, but I was having fun being an idiot, okay? And, and there's problems, because life has problems. And boy, when I got saved, I had the time of my life as a teenager. Teenagers are depressed now. They're messed up, sadly. Um, uh, comparable to that number of, for boys was just under 9%. The comparable numbers of millennials for millennials the same age registered at half the Gen Z, about 13% for girls and 5% for boys. Kids are on their devices all the time, he says, and boys, but boys play video games, often in groups. Boys thrive if they have a group of boys competing against another group of boys. 
Uh, most girls, by contrast, are drawn by visual platforms, Instagram and TikTok in particular. If you go to those things, it's, it's, it's a lot of women. Okay, because they're, 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 the visual thing and seeing what they're doing and beautiful pictures, and they're all like, and, you know, they're all, uh, you know, it's, it's all that and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, uh, these are about display and performance. You, uh, you're, don't take that picture and put it on Instagram, by the way, and everyone will be jealous. And uh, you get depressed. Your post, you post your perfect life. Listen to this. You post your perfect life, then you flip through the photos of other girls who have a more perfect life, and you feel depressed. So if, if Andrew and I are buddies in life, we saw the other one get rejected by the girl, and we saw the other one drop the football for the touchdown, and we went through normal life, and we kind of saw the ups and downs, and we know, yeah, you know, Andrew, I know Andrew has some problems with, you know, stinky feet or whatever, and we kind of know we're just guys, right? These things on social media, everybody puts these things where they're happy and everything's great. And they, and they, even, they even do, you know, some, some change in the pictures, like more beautiful than they are. And then the girl's on there going, her life's so good. She's so beautiful. Everything, she never, she's always smiling. And then they start put, putting up their fake world. But my life's miserable. I don't have a boyfriend like she does. She doesn't either. She just put them on there, okay, in the picture, okay. And 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 by the way, she didn't post when you know he dumped her. All she posted was, you know what? I decided he did not really appreciate me. No, you got dumped, but you didn't put that in your social media. And so the other girl doesn't understand that and says, "I'm a loser." It's all a fake world, okay. And so all these girls are depressed, thinking there's something wrong with them. Oh, bah, 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 bah. Man, I'm running out of time. Um, he calls the phenomenon compare and despair. He says, it seems to social media because you communicate with people, but it's performative. You don't actually get social relationships. You get weak, fake social um, links. Oh, goodness, I'm so out of time. Um, universally, uh, students who um, matriculate starting in 2014 or so have arrived on campus in defend mode. Here they are in the safest, most welcoming, most inclusive, most anti-racial place on the planet, but many of them were acting like they were entering some sort of dystopian, threatening, immoral world. Once they enter the workplace, they're less innovative, less inclined to take risk, and that may undermine American capitalism. He points to the work of uh, uh, Manhattan Institute's Zach Goldberg, who extrapolated from Pew Research Institute and found that 50... <laughs> this is not funny, but it is. 56% of liberal women 18 to 29 responded affirmatively to the question, has a doctor or other health care provider ever told you that you have a mental health condition? Okay, 59% of these women, at a, just as a doctor or a psychiatrist, they just ask them, have you ever been asked if you have a, you have a mental health condition? Like, that's risky to ask that if you're a doctor. That's insulting. But doctors are even saying, because, because they're, okay, it's not good. It's not good. Um, some of that, he says, has been uh, just self-presentation, meaning uh, imagined. This is exactly part of the problem. This new ideology vic uh, uh, valorizes victimhood. And if you, your sub-community uh, motivates you to say you have an anxiety disorder, that, that is how, um, how is that going to affect you the rest of your life? Uh, you're not going to take chances. You're not going to, you're going to, uh, you're not going to, uh, you're going to ask for accommodations. You're going to play it safe. You're not going to swing for the fences. You're not going to. Uh, uh, you're not going to start your own company. Gen Z women, um, because they're so anxious, they're going to be less successful than Gen Z men, and that's saying a lot because Z Z uh, Gen Z men are messed up. Generation Z women have done very well in life. Okay, that little bit older group. Gen Z men haven't, I'll tell you why that is, because they got pounded from when they were 12 years old to when they were 25 saying, you're an oppressor, you're horrible, you're mean, you should, you're, and they just, this, this kid going, oh, okay, I'm an oppressor, I'm terrible, uh, and they got insecure, and they did, were afraid to try anything in life, and they're afraid of failure, and they're afraid if they succeed, everybody say, just because you're a man, and they, so they were afraid of being happy, 
They almost felt like they had to be a loser in order for everybody to say, yeah, you're a good man. And they, they beat down masculinity um, for that, while that generation was growing up. And so that, the, the Gen Z men, it destroyed, I, I, man, if you go back and listen to my sermons, I said that was going to happen to the teenage, don't listen to them. You are important, you're great, you can do great things. And, 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 and all the young people should think, hey, I can go conquer the world with Jesus. I can go make it. I can have a great life. They should have that. If you don't walk in with that, life's going to beat you down. You're going to have no hope of having a great life. But you got to go in with some with some belief and some and some hope and uh, and stuff like that. Um, is there a solution? I'd uh, raise the internet age to the uh, uh, internet adulthood to age sixteen and enforce it. First article. Um, this is a, a different one. Between 2010 and 2016, the number of adolescents experienced at least one major depressive episode leaped by 60%, according to a nationwide survey conducted by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The 2016 survey conducted of 17,000 kids found that 13% of them had ma- major depressive episodes. That's not normal for that age group, compared to 8% of kids surveyed in 2010. <laughs> Did you hear those numbers? It's ridiculous. Okay, I'm not going to have time to read all these articles. Let me just talk to you for a minute. I'm not going to have time to finish at my last point. I'm not going to have time for anything. And uh, so, I know what I'm talking about. I watch society. I've been working with teenagers since I was a teen. I was leading teenagers and counseling teenagers at 17, okay? A teenager, a parent would come to me and say, my kid is just despondent. I already know the answer. <laughs> okay, almost always. How much time he's been on his phone? Well, way too much time. Or no, it's not his phone. It's his video game. Or it's not that. It's 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 a technology. My my, my I am so depressed. I feel like I'm just ugly and worthless. And how much time do you spend on social media? And here's the thing I get. And here's the problem right here. And I want you to get this. Is I get. I say you need to get off your phone. You can get off your phone. Oh, you're just old. You don't understand. And, and I know that sounds kind of funny, but it's horrific because they don't listen to me because of that. Okay? I'm right. You need to get off your phone or your video game. And you say, uh, you know what? That'd be really hard. I know because you're addicted. You're an addict. And I start my same conversation I've been having since I was, since I used to talk to the alcoholics and say, you don't think you're an alcoholic? The, my friends are alcoholics in high school. My friend's dads, you don't think you're not, no, I'm not, I can stop anytime. Why don't you do it then? I mean, everybody in your life tells you you should stop this. You're not happy. Your health's terrible. You got a huge beer belly. I, 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 I will sometime. Well, I just I can do anytime I want to. Why don't you start now? Well, you know, that's my friends I hang out with. And, you know, it just, it just brings me a little comfort when I... In, in all the conversations. And then they stop. They say, I don't know why I couldn't admit it. Everybody. Ready? Everybody needs to check and see if they're technology, if they're a technology addict by removing it from your life for a period of time. And you will find you might be freaked out. Where is it? Now, I understand if you have to do it for your job. And you say, so let me, again, let me just explain to you. You say, I have to have it for my job. I have no problem with that. I get it. So you you work for Uber and your phone goes and, and tells you got you got to go pick somebody up. And you pick it up and you say, yes. And then you put it in the slot there where it says where you're going and you drive there. And then you don't touch it again. And after you pick the person up, you don't look at it again. Take out your Bible, start reading it. Pray for a while. But don't use your phone at all. Don't get on social media. Are you addicted to social media? The the best technology on earth The best AI technology on earth is in social media to make it so that when you're about to stop, you keep on going. And to find what video will make you keep looking. 
because the longer you look, the more ads get clicked and the best technology. And that's why so many people are like, oh, what? Oh my soul. I did not realize I looked that because the best technology on earth is watching you and saying, whenever a video of blah, 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 blah comes up, they've got to click on it. And it can be a video of some guy on a skateboard going downstairs and falling on his head. Or it can be a video of some beautiful woman, or it can be a video, or it can be uh, 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 whatever it is. It can be anything, whatever, because it's watched you. And every little thing you scroll past, and everything you click on, everything you look at the comments on, it says that's what they're interested in. I'm going to make them keep looking. When they're going to stop looking, I'm going to bring it. It's unbelievable. And it's designed addiction. And so everybody has to say, can I get off my social media if you have it? Can I not, can I not check my email every hour? Can I not check my, can I just put this away? People, you go to your prayer closet with your phone on. You've got to stop. And you have to check if you're an addict. Okay? I'll not be proud of the power of any. I have some other stuff to do. And, and so can you not play the video game? Well, what would I do? <laughs> Call me. I will give you something to do, okay? There's a million things to do. People used, young people used to be like, I don't, I can't, I don't know, there's so many things to do. And, and you old people, sleep. You know, do something. I mean, there's, there's always something to do. Goodness. I have not, I have not been bored in over 35 years. Literally. I understand. There's nothing to do. What's wrong with you? There's people to reach, there's people to love, there's letters to write, there's, what? There's a million great things. Go pick up the garbage in your neighbor. Do something productive. Go comfort somebody who's hurting. Do something. But don't be an addict. Life's too short for addictions. Unless you're going to addict yourself to the ministry. Addict yourself to being with Jesus. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for the chance to teach this. I pray we to really get the truth of this and just the danger our society is in. These are staggering, historic, unprecedented numbers. Higher than the Great Depression of, of, of depression, suicide, hopelessness. And it's the same people, the people who are in technology all the time. And Lord, you've got to fix this thing, and I pray you'd help us. It's not just the porn, Lord, that's destroying everybody. It's 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 social media it's video games it's it's an obsession it's it's you talk to them and they, and they don't do the rest. they're not studying they won't come they won't uh, pay attention lord we've got to fix this thing and i pray it at least an open door so the rest of the world might lose their mind we would not be addicted to this dangerous technology out there may we use it for your glory which it can be used for and may it be a blessing we pray this in jesus name amen